Alright, what's up once more guys? Welcome back again to another Python video. We're still looking at Hashlib, still doing some crazy code stuff, and uh, now we're actually going to get to hashing some text and some information. So we've got Hashlib all up here. We've got we've got it imported inside idle. You guys can do the same if you haven't already. I was taking a look at the algorithms variable, or that little piece of data in the last, couple, in the last video anyway, and uh, it showed us the algorithms that we were guaranteed to be able to use with Hashlib. So MD5 is up there, and and that's what we're going to be taking a look at today. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, create a new object. Oh, actually, I'm kind of jumping the gun here. You know, oh, man, that's a, that's a good segue, I guess. All right, so hashlib, when it works, anyway, you can see all these functions out here. And we've got MD5. Let's, get, let's work with that for this video. Now, if I created my uh, two parentheses, as if we could call it, you can see if I went inside the parentheses and did control backslash, idle that'll give us a little description of the function. It'll return an MD5 hash object, and it's optionally initialized with a string. So we could pass a string in here as a constructor, that sort of thing. But anyway, I was as I was saying, this creates an MD5 hash object. So I'm going to go ahead and really call mine MD5 object, and we can set that equal to what this function returns for us. So MD5 object is now what we can use to access and actually work with our MD5 hash. So, okay, let's get MD5 object right ready to roll, and uh, if I use our dot select, you can see some of the stuff that we can work with here. Block size, let's see what that does. Block size, okay, 64 long, 64L, that's what that means. You can actually uh, get some information about all this stuff with, I believe, DIR. MD5 object, we can pass in the name of our, our object here, and it'll tell us some of the stuff that we have. Maybe if we typed in help, that'll tell us, or at least give us a bit of, a bit more information about what it is that we're working with here. Help, yep, yep, there it does. There it goes, there it is. <laughs> all right. So we were looking at, what was it just then? Does it tell us anything about these uh, data descriptors? Block size, digest size. Oh man, it doesn't give us any description about that. Well, you guys know what this means, right? We're going to head off to the internet. And if I go over to nullshell.com, <laughs> that right there, good stuff. If we went over to Google, what we can do is type in Python, oh, not inside the hood, hashlib, there it is, we can go to the documentation, and we can scroll through all this crap, yada yada yada, and let's get to, what was the function we just called, if I scroll up here, it was block size, okay, it was a, it was a variable, so block size, we can search for that, the internal block size of the hash algorithm in bytes, so, for us, that's 64L, or 64 long pieces of integers. Okay, that's pretty cool. Oh, and it looks like you can see some of the other stuff here that we've got. Digest size, the size of the resulting hash in bytes. Well, we can, we can run that. MD5 object dot digest size. That's that was. And right now it's 16L. Awesome, awesome. And then we have some other stuff there. Yeah, that looks like that's all we can do for the data descriptors. Oh, there is name, too. MD5 object. Name, as you saw, will actually tell us the kind of algorithm that we're working with to hash. Now, right now, that's MD5. And obviously, for us, as the programmer, we know that because we call it the MD5 object, obviously. <laughs> Duh. But uh, in, in a future terms, if you're using, like, in conjunction with the new... Um, function from the core hashlib library right up here that it might be a good idea because we can pass in the name of what it is that we're going to be calling anyway or at least creating a new hash of if we use that it might be a good idea to use this name data descriptor or variable right down there inside the object but I wanted to get this into your brains because I this is why I avoided this new function that I was introducing a few, a few videos back this is actually slower than using the typical constructor of the actual uh, descriptor's name. So, MD5, in case that's not uh, something exclusive to your OpenSSL installation, you should be using the constructor for that specific algorithm. Okay. <laughs> anyway, that's enough of the garble and jamble and all this crap. Let's move into actually working with the object a bit more. So, 
We can do all the stuff with it. Hex digest, 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 digest size. These are actually all about finding the new form of the information. We actually need to get some information and pass it to the freaking object. So what we want to do here? Come on. So the function that we're looking for is update. And update, it's a built-in method, obviously, of our hash object. And if we get inside our parentheses, update this hash object state with the provided string. So if I were to type in um, encrypt this, or probably a better terminology, hash this. Okay, now it's updated that object with that string. That's what it's going to typically hash. So what we can do now is actually find out the value or that, that new updated version. And what we do there is call digest. Now digest is going to return us the digest value of the string as binary data. So that's kind of messy inside of our program. We might kind of prefer hex digest. And that'll give us some nice numbers and the hex values of all this crap. But anyway, here is our encrypted or hashed data. This is what we'll typically store rather than hash this. So if I were to uh, kind of make something new and typically put in a password here for our update, we would hash it to something more secure, then we would store this in like a text file or a MySQL database to keep it secure, but still keep it maintainable that we can work with. So, kaboom, we're practically done. We've got the actual encrypted string and all the information that we need, but what if we wanted to add a little bit more to this? What we can actually do is call update once more, and it'll sort of like append the remaining strings back onto it. Hash this, and this too. Now, if we were to run hex digest, it's actually that entire string hashed this with and this to append it onto it. Let's try something uh, pretty interesting here, though. Let's actually clone this whole object, or this whole, anyway, hash that we've been working with. And you can do that with, very clearly, the function called copy. Copy is essentially cloning, or creating a copy. You can think of it, obviously, as any you'd like. So if I did md5 copy, and that's going to equal the return value of this function. Because you can see with the description, it returns a copy of the hash object. So if I had md5 copy now, sorry, md5 copy, and actually ran hex digest, you can see that we have the exact same string as we had up here because it is the same object. It's just a clone. So that hex is still there, the hash is still there, it's everything that we were working with prior. <laughs> okay. I think we're just about done here. We've covered what we need to be working with inside Hashlib. It's a very, very simple. All it is is a bunch of uh, bunch of functions and working with some strings and that sort of thing. But you can make some really cool stuff, and you're actually keeping your information secure. And that's the best part of this library. All right, I'm going to sign out now, guys. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again in the next tutorial. Bye.